Hey guys, let's get more news about Dallas, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. Report, Jerry Jones gets handed major win in heated breach of contract paternity lawsuit. From public proclamations surrounding what has been the loudest, continuous contract debacle of the past decade concerning the Dallas Cowboys' now ninth-year quarterback, to controversial, broad-sweeping political statements, the owner of America's team has been anything but quiet during his tenure in charge of the Cowboys. And one always gets the impression that he enjoys being in the spotlight, even if it is being criticized by the media and in sports talk radio hosts. The one thing that has always been clear is that the number one thing that Jones fears the most is irrelevancy, and keeping you and your team in the headlines is the best way, outside of, you know, winning, to achieve that. Since then, Jones has been court-ordered to take a paternity test to see whether he is in fact Ms. Davis's father, whilst a separate defamation suit against the Dallas Cowboys owner has been dismissed. As part of the ongoing paternity case, Alexander Davis aimed to void a 1998 settlement between her mother and Jones, in which Jones allegedly paid $375,000 to the mother alongside financial sums to be put in a trust for the daughter, in exchange for the Dallas owner not admitting paternity, something Jones himself denies. However, a judicial ruling has decided whether the agreement is voidable or not, per Mike Florio of Pro Football Talk. The Texas court ruled that parents, in fact, are able to enter legal agreements with each other on the behalf of the child in question. It's really shocking, I respectfully disagree with ruling. I can't in good conscience let this ruling stand without trying to fight it. I can't let my legacy be allowing a rich father to prevent their child from being able to establish paternity. The case continues, and will go to trial on July 22nd. Honestly though, for me, the only thing I really want to see are the results of the paternity test, which are somehow taking five months to be finished. Funny that. 9. Is Jake Ferguson knocking on door for All Pro? Mickey Spagnola, once again, that has a lot to do with opportunity and how defenses decide to play a Cowboys offense hoping to threaten with three viable receiver options, C.D. Lamb, Brandon Cooks, and TBD at third spot, along with an ability to throw to running backs out of the backfield along with this new approach of giving Deuce Vaughn an opportunity to either line up in the slot or catch out of the backfield. But how about we start with playing at a Pro Bowl level first? His 2023 slash numbers of 71 slash 761 slash 5, second on the team in receptions and yards receiving, will gain him notice if he can repeat, but also more attention from defenses, too. Kyle Eumanns, last season, there were only six tight ends to finish with over 750 receiving yards and at least five receiving touchdowns. Jake Ferguson was one of those six in just his second year as a pro. He joined George Kittle and Sam Laporta on that list, who were both named All-Pros last season. Ferguson's production steadily improved as the season went on and he climbed the ladder to become the second most effective receiving target in the Dallas offense last season. That is no fluke. If he can continue to fill the role he carved out last season and grow his trust with Dak in the passing game, there is no reason he couldn't be an All-Pro in 2024. Patrick Walker, there's a rocket strapped to the back of Jake Ferguson. This isn't a conclusion I came to after his breakout season in 2023. It's one I've had since he got the call as the fourth-round pick in the 2022 NFL Draft. To the chagrin of some, I noted then he'd be the reason the Cowboys parted ways with Dalton Schultz, and that occurred. I said that once the T1 seat was vacated, Ferguson would take hold of it with both hands and never look back and, last year, he did exactly that. He's a Pro Bowl caliber tight already heading into year three, and I'd like you to keep in mind he did all he did last season during a season in which Mike McCarthy was still feeling things out as the Cowboys play caller, a very large hint at what's to come as the duo walk into 2024. The steps he's taken to add muscle mass to become an elite run blocker, his demeanor as a blocker is already sociopathic, without losing his athleticism will pay off in an all-pro honor sooner than later.
Nick Eatman, just like any time you're knocking on the door and looking to stay there, someone has to move out. The point here is, in order to be an all-pro this year, you have to replace someone. And don't forget this part, Travis Kjeltse, the all-world tight end from the Chiefs, was not an all-pro last year, first or second team. Now, that was just the Associated Press team that had George Kittle and rookie Sam Laporta as the two selections. Sure, Ferguson could wind up on that level without a doubt, especially if defenses try to do things differently with C.D. Lamb. I think the nature of the question is can Ferguson make it to the elite status, and I think the answer is yes. Will he be an all-pro? That's pretty tough, considering the fact that Mark Andrews, Travis Kjeltse were not on that list last year, and there's probably a handful of players around the league, guys like Trey McBride, Dalton Kincaid, Evan Engram and Kyle Pitts, and maybe even Dalton Schultz that believe they can take that next leap as well. Dallas Cowboys trade for 4,000-yard RB with 21 touchdowns in preseason proposal. The Dallas Cowboys have a problem. After sitting out a gangbusters veteran running back market that saw Saquon Barkley, Josh Jacobs, Aaron Jones, and even former Cowboy Tony Pollard change zip codes during free agency, Dallas largely sat on the sidelines before taking a flyer that Ezekiel Elliott can still be a productive contributor at age 28 and after logging 2,065 career carries. The Cowboys and head coach Mike McCarthy have publicly been consistent in suggesting the offense will feature a backfield by committee with Elliott playing a key role. Miles Sanders has a Pro Bowl appearance on his resume, the experience of playing in a Super Bowl with the Philadelphia Eagles, and was seemingly the odd man out in the Panthers' backfield after signing with Carolina as a free agent last offseason. Still, Sanders, 27, could be an ideal fit both as a runner and receiving option out of the backfield for the Cowboys' offense. Through his first five seasons, Sanders has rushed for 4,140 yards with 21 touchdowns, while adding 151 receptions for 1,096 yards and three more scores. For the Panthers, moving on from Sanders would clear the way, officially, for Chubba Hubbard and explosive rookie Jonathan Brooks to become focal points in the offense. Likewise, it isn't inconceivable that the Cowboys would be able to land Sanders in exchange for even a meager sixth-round pick in the 2025 draft. And you fan? What do you think of the situation of Miles Sanders? Leave your opinion in the comments.